the, the next and last trend that we're going to talk about is electronegativity. Electronegativity is defined as the ability of an atom to attract electrons when the atom is in a compound. It's basically a measure of how much an atom wants electrons. Okay? Some atoms really like to take electrons. Some atoms just give them away. Okay? Electronegativity is a scale from 0 to 4. Okay? There are no units. It's just a number. Okay, it's how much an atom wants electrons if you put it with another atom. Okay, now take a look at this. This is just another representation of a periodic table, and if it is has a higher electronegativity, it's going to be higher on the a higher level on the chart. Okay, looking at this chart, which atom has the highest electronegativity? Chlorine. Chlorine. Okay, chlorine is the key to the entire electronegativity uh, subject. Okay, fluorine is the most electronegative. Which was the least electronegative? Mm -hmm. Fr, francium. Okay. Fluorine really wants electrons, while francium just wants to give them away. Francium wants to give them away so much that it's, very, it's the most reactive element, francium is. Okay? Now, this is just words saying what we just figured out that electronegativity decreases as you go down a group. Okay, so it's the opposite trend as the atomic radius. It decreases as you go down a group. <coughs> okay, now here's the question. Why? Why does it decrease when you go down a group? And it's called the shielding effect. Think about it like this, okay? Consider hydrogen, the simplest, okay? There's a, there's a proton there on the inside, and then on the outside you've got one lone electron, okay? There's nothing in between that proton and that electron. They can feel each other and, uh, and be attracted to each other without anything else getting in the way. If you can compare that with lithium and consider the, the protons in the lithium nucleus versus an electron that's hanging out here, there's something in the way. That, that inner orbital, that inner orbital has two electrons that are blocking that outer electron. So that outer electron does not feel the, feel the protons as much. Does that make sense? It's like, if you're an only child, your parent is going to be on you all the time. There's nothing distracting your parent away from, from you. If you've got two brothers and sisters, you don't have to sweat it as much because they're going to take up some of your parents' attention as well. Okay? So you're not as, you don't feel your parents as much. Does that make sense? I'll try to put it in teenage terms. So like Francium, would that be on the far left or far right? Fr Francium is on the bottom left. Yeah, but out of those two, which one would be Fr Francium? Yeah. So Francium is like... Okay. Imagine you're an electron out here, and there's all these electrons that are inside all these orbitals blocking you. Okay? So Francium has the highest degree of shielding. Fluorine has the lowest degree of shielding. Okay. Increases from left to right, okay? Now, it's very easy to understand why electronegativity or how much an, an atom wants an electron increases from left to right. You add more protons. Think about it. You've got sodium with 11 protons, and then you're comparing it with argon with 18 protons. 18 protons is going to want electrons a lot more than 11 protons, right? Because you've got 18 positive charges all in that little space versus 11 positive charges, okay? 
It's the same reason why atoms get smaller when you go across a period. There's more protons pulling in on those electrons. Make sense? Let's see if you really believe what I'm saying. Oh, wait a minute. There's a couple other things here we need to know. Okay, fluorine is the most electronegative. The easiest way to think about electronegativity, whatever element is closer to fluorine is going to be more electronegative. Okay? When two elements are close, or when you're trying to figure out which element is more electronegative, just figure out where they are in relation to fluorine. Also, a little caveat here, you want to ignore the noble gases. Okay? The noble gases do not count because they already have filled orbitals and they do not want to react. Okay. Let's see if you've actually been listening to me. What's going to have greater electronegativity? Chlorine or iodine? They're both halogens. Nope, sorry. You destroyed 100%. A is Cl, B is I. Again, the, the reason why we have clickers is that you do, you do not discuss your answer. Let's see. I need to figure out if people are picking up what I'm laying down here. Three seconds. Three, two, one. I think that it is... Chlorine. Close to 100. There's still a couple of people that aren't listening to me. Okay. Phosphorus or magnesium? Which one has greater electronegativity based on your trends? Okay, five seconds. Fluorine is out. Three, two, one. Phosphorus is closer to fluorine, right? So phosphorus would have the higher electronegativity. Oh, almost got the hundo. Just missed it. Mr. Smiley is elated. Okay. Here you go, the grand finale here. You've got four of them there. Arby's in the bottom left. And he's in the, on the top right. Okay, five seconds. Three, two, one. Correct answer is C. Let's see how many people got faked out by the neon. Right? Neon is a noble gas. Therefore, it does not count when we talk about electronegativity. Okay? Any questions about electronegativity or atomic radius? Is that why the graph is funny? Yes. That's why it said unknown for helium and neon and argon be like because there's no electronegativity. It, it just you should leave it out of your graph. Okay.